not just Christians who are religious. In fact, if you look in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, you'll find the definition of religion is this, any set of beliefs about the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. Does an atheist have a set of beliefs about the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe? Yes, the atheist has a story about the world that he wants you to believe. Does a Marxist have a set of beliefs about the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe? Yes, Marxists are religious. What about people who are involved in New Age religions? Yes, they're also religious. What about people who say, I don't believe anything at all? Do they have a set of beliefs about the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe? Yes, they do. Their beliefs are that there is no cause, that nature is irrelevant, and there is no purpose in the universe. But that's a set of beliefs about the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. So the Bible is a special book. Its revelation from God is unique among all the religions of the world. But what is the Bible's actual story? Because you see, when... when Sally Lloyd-Jones claimed in her children's story that the Bible has a lot of stories in it, but they're all really telling one big story. A lot of people don't grasp that. They say, no, that's not true. There are 66 books in the Bible. They were written by a whole bunch of different authors over the course of 1,500 years. They can't possibly be telling the same story. But Scripture itself, when all of the books are put together, creates a coherence that has at least three parts. Some people break this up into four parts. Some people break it up into six parts. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to say there are three parts to it. And these three parts are creation, fall, and redemption. Creation, fall, redemption. That God created the world, that human beings fell into sin, and that God is in the process of redeeming His people as well as creation. 